This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the Think Tech Studios in beautiful downtown Honolulu on the Pioneer Plaza. This is a special edition of Business in Hawaii. The legislature is in session uh, and we have uh, a small business regulatory review board uh, chairman that's going to be here talking to us a little bit about what they're up to during this session and some of the different uh, I guess regulations and rules that they are going to be taking a look at or have looked at in the past. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Tony Borge. He's the chairman of the Hawaii Small Business Regulatory Review Board. So glad you can make it here oh, today. Thank you, Reg. Glad to be here. Yeah. All right. Now, you're going to be pretty busy, I guess. Uh, tell me a little bit about the board. What does the board do? When did it start? I mean, what's the background? Well, the board actually was, uh, uh, statute became about in 1998. So the board's about 20 years old. Congratulations. And it's, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the intent of the board is to really look after the interests of small business as far as rules and regs that would affect or does affect small businesses. And it's made up of, currently it's made up of 11 board members. Um, and it's pretty much where the board members are appointed, uh, three by the governor, uh, three by the president of the Senate, three by the, the Speaker of the House. Um, it started all that way in 1998, 2000. And then somewhere along the line, they, they made a change in the statute and they went down to nine board members. And the problem that we were having with just having nine board members, one is having enough members, board members at the meetings for a quorum, and the other one is a voting quorum. So you know, we, we went back to the legislature and requested that we increase the, member, the board members up to 11. And we were able to do that, I believe, a year ago. And, and uh, so we look forward to having a full slate of, of 11 board members. And knock on wood, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Right. And I guess for full disclosure purposes, I'm also a member of the board. The governor right. just recently appointed me to the board. So I've been to a few of the board meetings. And so I'm the, the newbie on the, on the board, uh, still learning all the different, uh, I guess, protocols, how mm -hmm. things work. But part of what I think is worth mentioning is that we have representations from all the different islands. Yeah, very true. We have a representative, well right now we don't have one from Kauai, but we have one from each of the counties. Um, and um, you know, we, we haven't had one from Kauai for over a year, I think it's been, yeah, over a year. Wow. So we're finally uh, looking at uh, having a board member join us from, from Kauai. And, and more importantly, we do have a good cross-section from, from the counties, but also across the different industries. And that's the intent, is to have a good cross-section representative of, of the businesses um, that's out there. And you know, small businesses make up the majority of the, um, um, I guess, the workforce in Hawaii. Employers, 90%. Well, they, they employ, uh, I guess, on an employee labor force basis, about 55, 60% right. of all the, the employees in the state are working for small business, but just in total number, they represent about 97 point something percent right. of all the businesses in Hawaii. And that's true, and most people don't, don't realize that. They think it's the big companies that really, it's the small businesses cumulative that, that you know, really uh, uh, have contributed to the state's economy and growth and continue to do that. That's why it's important that, you know, for us as a small business regulatory review board, I know that's a, you know, whole lot to chew on, but basically it's looking at rules and regs, existing, newly promulgated stuff or stuff that's being looked at uh, by the different agencies um, to put forth, and, and we get to look at it and chime in as far as the impact it will have on small business. And besides that, not only the existing, um, or, or rather the new stuff or the existing, if there's a small business out there that is having, uh, suffering a financial impact or economic impact, from a rule and reg, we need to know about that. That's something that we need to look at because if it's affecting us one small, I know it's affecting more than one. And you know the thing is with small businesses, it's very small, and you know they they're running their businesses. It's it's not something that you know after eight hours you just can forget about it. You're always doing something to make that business you know uh, run efficiently and you know obviously to make a profit. So if we can you know help by 
um, looking at the rules and or providing a, a advice and, and uh, you know, working at resolving the problem with a rule and reg uh, benefits all small businesses. So uh, the board's looking for those challenges that might be out there for an existing rule or regulation or maybe even something that's being proposed. And the more the board is aware of this, the more the board can get engaged and try to take some steps to advise the governor sure. on uh, you know, maybe a course of action to make things a little bit better. And that's a good point, um, Reg, is that we're an advisory board to the governor and the legislature. We also look at county rules uh, that also affect small business, and we also chime in on that. But it's, it's really an advisory board. And, um, you know, first and foremost, though, I believe that you know all the uh, the, uh, the the government, uh, uh, the governor, the mayor, the mayors, uh, you know, and pretty much the legislature. They're very interested and concerned with small business. So this is something that you know is not. Uh, we're not up there as a as a you know just a, a front. We're there to actually you know take in take heed of what's happening to small business. If there is rules and regs that is you know prohibiting them from really flourishing because. That's the idea. The better the small businesses do, the better the state's economy, more taxes for the capital here, you know, and for the state yeah. as a whole. Right. The yeah. state's got to pay its bills. Yeah. So, and, you know, what's interesting, and another th point that I think is worth mentioning, is that most employment, the increases, the hires that happen every year, is through the small businesses. You know, we've got some big businesses here, and, and that's great. We need them. Mm -hmm. But most of the new jobs are being created by the small businesses and the constant creativity that people have when they start a business. And you know, I, I judge, uh, I'm involved in judging some of the awards that take place for the Small Business Administration. And I can tell you one of the criteria is how many employees have you added over mm -hmm. the last three years. And there's some impressive numbers that I've seen where they'll increase, they'll double or triple the number of employees every year because they're growing so quickly. Uh, and that's a, a good source of payroll taxes, income Definitely. taxes, you know, sales taxes, all of that that the small business generates and turns over to the state. You can't let that get sick. If it gets a flu, everybody gets a little sick. No, you, you say that, that, you know, that's perfectly correct. I'm with you 100% on that. Uh, you know, and the Small Business Regulatory Review Board, as you well know, the board members are pretty much, it, it's, it's, we don't get paid. It's, you know, we what? volunteer. What? Well, nobody told you that. Oh, don't, oh yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> but, hey, you know, and it's, but it, it, it's something you feel good about, right? I mean, if we can make, a, if we can really um, help out uh, fellow small businesses, I, I think it's a win-win. And that's why, you know, personally, I, I devote my time and um, I don't think it's, it's being wasted. Uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, one of the things we, we need to do is get the word out about the Small Business Regulatory Review Board. Small businesses have a, you know, a portal that they can you know, voice their concerns if, if they're affected with, with a rule or rig that's out there. You well, know? You know, and maybe this is a good time to kind of walk us through, Tony, a little bit on how that process works. I mean, if there was a business out there right now that's listening to this show mm -hmm. and, and they go, you know, there is this regulation that I've been having a real challenge with and it just doesn't make any sense. How can they bring that to the board's attention and what's the process? How does it flow through the system? Okay. Well, the first thing they can do, and one of the things that we've, we've done recently is on our, we do have a website. Uh, and on the website, you'll, you'll be able to go on there and... And that website's on the screen. It's on the screen. For anybody that wants to see it. And uh, so I won't uh, mention the web address there, but you look under the tab, Re Re Regulation Review Card. Re Regulation Review Card. It's very self-explanatory. You go ahead and fill that out. And, you know, you, it's easy to go through. It's fill a it up. simple one-page, two-page type thing. Yeah. And, and what you'll do is, is send it, submit it to... Uh, the Small Business Regulatory Review Board will look at it, what agency is involved, you know, and then we'll get back to you as far as, you know, probably getting more information. And what we, we, we what will follow up from there is, need be, we would have uh, posted, have it on a future hearing. Normally, the, the Small Business Regulatory Review Board meets monthly. Mm -hmm. It's usually the, what is that, the third Wednesday? Third Wednesday of the month. And um, so, you know, we'll post it on the agenda, Part of the Sunshine Law, we gotta you know abide by that. So we'll have it on there, and we'll have the agency come forth and you know, pretty much uh, kind of go through the um, 
question and answer process, they fill out an impact statement, first of all. If there's something that we, we um, put forth and ask them about and ask them to come in to, to um, um, you know, provide input on, they, they have a questionnaire that they're going to fill out. If it's an existing rule, um, they'll fill out according to that as far as how they perceive that as affecting small business. If it's something that a small business is saying that is affecting them, um, they won't necessarily fill out that, that impact form, or the agency won't fill it out, but they'll come in and you know, hopefully we can get some dialogue going, finding out more, uh, get questions answered as far as, you know, if a small business is affected by this rule, I mean, you know, what, what, um, uh, what is being done? Is there any other small business that's, you know, kind of chimed in on it or, you know, it's more of a fact finding, but it's all pretty much of the process. It's an open public process. And the idea is to, you know, see if it does impact small business. And we get answers from the agencies and as well as from input from the small business. And, and the, the people that are coming in and providing, I'll use the word testimony, they're coming in and, and making their remarks and their comments about either in support of or against the bill. They also make recommendations on maybe what needs to be done to, to fix it or make it better. And then once all this background, this information gathering is complete, uh, then there's a recommendation that we pass this on yes. to the governor. That would go to the governor, and from there the governor would, you know, um, pretty much uh, uh, review it. And if it's with the agency, you know, take it up with the agency as far as uh, if it's a rule that's um, it's a two-step process where with the governor, if it's a new rule being um, proposed, it has to go to public hearing. The governor has to agree to put it to public hearing. So if we basically say, yeah, we agree, uh, there's um, we don't see any impact to small business. It should go to their preliminary public hearing. The governor will review it. And if he uh, agrees, it'll go to public hearing. Uh, he, he decides. And then by the same token, uh, once the r public uh, hearings are held, the agency would come back to the board uh, once again uh, and ask the governor, uh, or rather ask us for a uh, after public hearing review where we get to uh, review the feedbacks from the hearing and see if there's any you know, additional information, feedback from the public or small businesses that uh, there is an impact or uh, if there's anything that would impact small business in a negative way. And that's what we look for. Then we advise the governor once again, you know, the, they went to public hearing. It's, you know, if there's a concern for small business, we'll, we'll put it in the, um, in the report back to the governor and the governor will make his decision. You know, Small Business Regulatory Review Board is an advisory board. Uh, we advise we, we, we don't have enforcement powers or anything. It's just providing our advice as far as, you know, how it impacts small business. Right, and we're going to have to take a quick break, but as soon as we come back, I want to kind of put closure to that piece of the conversation and then get into some specifics. Okay. Um, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here this week uh, talking with Tony Borge, who's the chairman of the Small Business Regulatory Review Board for the state of Hawaii. We're going to take a short 60-second break, and we'll be right back. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by, and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by, and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Here's the way you walk. Here's the way you talk. They had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sound. So we do it. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here this week talking with the Small Business Regulatory Review Board for the state of Hawaii. Uh, Tony Borge, who is the chairman of the board, is here uh, sharing with us a little bit on the history of the board and how the board works. 
one of the, 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 I guess, messages that I'm picking up here is that we really need to get more engagement from the small business community. And I guess that's defined as any business with less than 100 employees. Right, correct. And so we need to get, as a board, more input and, and more awareness of some of the issues out there so that we can plug them into the system and start addressing these. Is that a fair statement? No, that's correcto mundo. I mean, you, got, you hit it right on the head. For a new board member, I got to say, we, we need more people like you. But that's exactly it. We need to get more input, more feedback from small businesses throughout the state. Uh, I know there's rules and regs out there that, that hinder small business. We need to know, and, and you know, it, it's easy to, to, to um, bring it to our attention. You don't need to do anything really formal. Uh, you know, a letter coming in stating if, if you know of the rule and reg, uh, you know, I know you, you might have to find the numbers for it or whatever, but if you don't, if you just have an idea, you know, hopefully we can, you know, find that rule and reg that you're, you're, you're um, affecting your business. But it doesn't take, you know, a formal statement as far as, you know, going to an uh, attorney or, you know, we just want to hear from you. And, and that would be the biggest thing is getting more input from small businesses. We got a good cross section of board members on the board from different industries. But really, you know, we want the information from, I hate to say the horse's mouth, but from the people who are really affected. And we also want the information as to why that rule should be, you know, either um, revised or rescinded or, you know, change, uh, whatever. A and we need that input as far as the financial impact or economic impact on the individual individual's business as well as, you know, if it's affecting him, it's affecting the others. But you're right, Reg, it's getting the input from small businesses. It doesn't take much time. I, I've done it personally back in 2009. So it, it's, uh, it's a worthwhile It, it is, and effort. it allows you to get engaged. It allows you to become active in the process. You know, so many people are frustrated because they feel that they don't have any influence on what goes on. And although we can't guarantee results, right. we can at least say that they've been heard. And they can come in, and, and they don't have to stay for the whole meeting. They can no. just come in and, and provide their remarks for just a, that they're part of it. So it's not like it's an all-day affair. It's I not. Mean, sometimes giving testimony down at the legislature requires you to be there almost all day long. You know, this board operates a little differently. Yeah, if, it, you know, if we get to the point where we're that, uh, hopefully it's not going to be a, as, as cumbersome as the legislature. But... You know, we do have, once in a while, we have to put limitations on, on, on testimony, you know, two to three minutes public testimony. For the most part, it's, we welcome, you know, uh, testimony that's sent in uh, over the, um, uh, through the website or, you know, uh, submitted written testimony uh, or just come down. You know, our meetings start at 10 o'clock, the third Wednesday of, of every month, yeah, down at the, Capital One. Yep, in the uh, D-Bed building. In the D-Bed building, fourth floor. Uh, it's a nice conference room. But, you know, they're welcome to join. It's open to the public. Um, but I know with small businesses, everybody's, you know, concerned uh, and, and, you know, hands-on working on their business. And, and for the most part, you know, we all do that. But if you can just let us know if there's something that affects you, a rule and reg existing, or is something that's new that's coming out you heard about, let us know. Because the agencies are more than cooperative to come to the, our board meetings and, and provide the reason why, the rationale, what they're doing. It's not like, you know, so we, we, we can get some, you know, answers and, and hopefully it's beneficial, you know, for a small business in right. the long run. Exactly. Now, you know, can, can we spend just a couple of minutes talking about some of the examples, some of the successes that, uh, that you've had? Now, I've, I've only been there for a few months, but you've been there for a, a long, lot longer than I have. So. What are some of the success stories that you've had? What are some of the issues that you've addressed? Well, you know, we've had uh, a couple of instances where it, the, I guess with the Department of Agriculture, they were looking at, at uh, the measure to prohibit, uh, I guess, circus animals, you know, into the state. And that came before the board because uh, one of the things was the outright ban on, on having circus animals coming into the state. And I know that went back and forth. It, the, the Department of Agri Agriculture came uh, uh, before us for the, to go to a public hearing. They did that. It took about a year, year and a half before they came back after public hearing with public comments. And a lot of it from the public, um, you know, was um, 
you know, they, 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 they wanted to see a, a regulation on, on circus animals coming in, uh, as well as, you know, from the other side there, you know, that for, from a business standpoint, you know, if you don't have live animals in, in a circus act, I mean, it's not much it's of not a, a circus. circus, right? Yeah. And it's, you know, especially you're kind of depriving uh, the, the youth and the kids uh, from you know something that, that you can see these these animals up, you know, live versus uh, you know virtual reality on, on photos, whatever. But anyway, so what happened on that? And that was uh, pretty one of the more, um, um, I guess, uh, vocal meetings and that we that we had and a lot of uh, attendees. And the board actually advised, the, we advised the governor that the economic impact to small businesses, you know, directly, indirectly, was significant mm. or would be significant. I mean, we can, you know, we understand, you know, the other side of the picture, but when you look at the economic consequences, um, you know, it just didn't make sense. Right. And, and, you know, our advice to the governor was, you know, we, 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 we can understand the, um, the move by the Department of Ag, but we had reservations with that aspect of it. So, you know, that... Well, that was a good success. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and although I wasn't on the board at the time, um, I'm also on the, the, the Small Business Administration's uh, Regulatory Review Board uh, in D.C. And so I would come as guest. And I remember one time I was there, and we heard testimony and some challenges uh, from the Liquor Commission. Right, the Honolulu Liquor Commission, you're right. right. And that was on the tax clearance. Um, apparently, yeah, absolutely right, Rich. You're stimulating my memory here, but <laughs> the, there was a problem with the tax clearance on the federal side uh, for the renewal of liquor licenses. And that's important because we have a lot of small businesses, you know, um, retail stores, um, on-premise type establishment, uh, restaurants and whatnot. And if you don't get your tax clearance, federal and state, you, you don't get your license renewed. And you're not going to be able to sell liquor, and that's a big part of their 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 um, business. Yeah. So that was that was a good. And I know you were able to help out with getting that clarified. And and um, the Honolulu Liquor Commission really, um, I believe, they really appreciated the, the assistance well, there. It was one of those success stories because there's 1,700 licensees yeah. around the state, uh, and you know, and it's it's all the different islands. All the, it's actually four liquor commissions, on, right. one on each island. And all of those licensees had to renew in the same 60-day window. And it was creating some real backlog and bottlenecks uh, for the IRS uh, to issue tax clearances for all of them in such a short period of time, particularly when they've been reducing their workforce and they've had budget mm -hmm. restraints. Uh, and we made some calls. We put some the word out. Uh, it went back to D.C. D.C. contacted the IRS commissioner. They pulled some strings. They got a, a conference call out here. Uh, and we got that resolved by allowing them to piggyback on another software package that allowed them to get those tax clearances right online. So there was no involvement from the IRS anymore. There was no bottleneck. Uh, it was all corrected. Um, and that all triggered from having, you know, the. Uh, the liquor commissions coming into the uh, the, the, the Hawaii Small Business uh, Regulatory Review Board and bringing some issues up, and we were able to fix it. No, that's great, and you're right. Back then, you were you're actually just serving the public, sitting there listening listening in on the on the on the board meeting, and uh, and that was a very good uh, outcome. And and you know, I'm, I'm glad you were there. Now you're part of the board, so we can see more and more of that happening. But the thing is, too, the, the counties are a big part of this. The counties, most for the most part, do bring forth rules and regs that they're looking at, either amending or, or proposing. And it, it does come, you know, in front of our board. And, of course, the Honolulu Liquor Commission is, is one of the ones uh, here that uh, constantly always brings stuff forward if it's going to be the fee increases, whatever. And, and, and in this case, was something that was just, you know, a passing point, but we kind of you were there and it we were able my to, attention. Yeah, and that was great. So it's a win-win for small business. One, one uh, message that I, I think makes sense uh, for people to understand, uh, and I know you know this, but I've had a lot of interaction with some of the elected officials over the year. Um, you know, I've had a lot of conversation about small business issues with uh, Senator Josh Green recently. I, and there's a lot of interest, and, and he shares a settlement of a lot of his colleagues. There's a lot of interest in trying to find ways to support small business. They're just not sure exactly what they can do to make it easier. And, and part of, I think, what 
the small business community and our board can do is to make sure that people understand that, you know, or make recommendations on mm -hmm. maybe how things can be made better. And if we're hearing from the, the uh, small business community about these issues and some suggestions for improvement, we pass this along to the governor. Um, it's a way of educating sure. people on how important these issues are and how easy it is to maybe make a fix. That's true, that's true. And you know, I think the best thing for small business, in this case, less is better than more. Uh, you know, from a small business standpoint, there's only limited amount of time you can do things. When you gotta wear multiple hats, if you have an employee, you have the HR issues, labor department issues. If you have a, trans you have a vehicle, you have transportation yeah. you know, regulations you gotta deal with. Uh, and, and uh, you know insurance it goes on and on you touching almost every agency within the you know the state and the, some of the federal not even to mention Department of Taxation oh, of course of course you yeah. know I mean that's a huge expense item yeah. and and sometimes they're not always consistent you know uh, and so there's there's we just need to be aware of these situations no, and, and we can be the voice I mean we can be we can be the you know we can carry the football so to speak you know for for the small business um, Remembering we're an advisory board only, but you know I, 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 we have a chance, and what we need is more input. We we need to hear from small businesses. Very good. Well, they can go to the website. Um, they can communicate and, and create awareness that way. And we're going to be doing maybe a little bit more outreach in the, the years ahead. You know, trying to get out and spread the word a little bit more. Um, but we are out of time, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have to wrap up. But I appreciate you taking time to come over and speak with us today, Tony. Thank you, Rich. Um, and I think maybe uh, going forward, we need to do this on a more regular basis, make sure that people are, are aware and following the progress of what the board is doing. I'm with you on that. Thank right. you very much. Super. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, and we focus on business topics, uh, successful businesses or organizations that help support small businesses to make them successful in Hawaii. Uh, we just talked with the Small Business Regulatory Review Board here in Hawaii. Uh, it was a great conversation with Tony Borge, the chairman, uh, and we're looking to see you next week. Until then, aloha.